So in this segment, we're going to be talking about um, the Telegraph, talking about the time to deliver on Brexit potential. I mean, this is a ludicrous uh, small article. This is the Telegraph's view, so this will be from their editorial board, uh, which is that more than two years after the UK left the EU, few, if any, of the benefits of Brexit have been realised, because there aren't many. The deal tied Britain to previously agreed laws to make continued trade with the bloc easier because the more we deregulate on goods, the harder it will be for us to export to the EU and also Northern Ireland. A separate protocol affecting Northern Ireland kept the province connected to the single market, which is something the British government came up with. These were always going to be problematic areas, the Northern Ireland protocol not so much, to say at least, and the wisdom in signing the agreement on the basis in 2019 was questioned at the time, but helped Boris win an election that year, and that was the whole point of it, for them to win an election off the back of it. It's possible that many of the difficulties would have been resolved by now had it not been for the pandemic hitting, bre uh, hitting within weeks of Brexit. That's not true, I don't think so at all, because they've been dealing with um, the Northern Ireland protocol kind of, over the last probably year or so, you know, COVID's obviously been a huge problem, but, you know, the, it doesn't eat up the time of the foreign secretary or the EU chief negotiator. Dealing with COVID has eaten up, I mentioned that, the, uh, sorry, eating, dealing with COVID has eaten up the political and economic capital of the EU and the UK. I, I would argue otherwise. Um, I would argue it hasn't really done so. But with the pandemic over, the, it's not. it's not over though. The time has come now to set up a coherent post-Brexit strategy. Surely we should have done that, um, Boris Johnson should have done that back in 2019 before the election, or straight afterwards he should have set out his vision um, for Brexit, you know, or should have done that in 2016, really. Really, if we're being, if we're being honest there. The first opportunity comes um, with the Queen's speech, which, you know, the government did mention some of the stuff they want to do. They're told it will contain seven bills um, to make sure the uh, most of Brexit by capitalising on regulatory freedom, leaving the EU involved. So deregulation, essentially, which we've spoken about before, deregulation of the insurance industry is not necessarily a good idea. Yet again, a bonfire of regulations is promised. This time it needs to deliver. It's not going to happen. Um, in the past, the UK's membership of the EU directives were often gold-plated in this country, making them even more onerous than necessary. Isn't that an irony that they're talking about deregulation, but they also talk about how the UK went above and beyond the EU regulations. It's one of the reasons certain businesses set up shop here, because they knew the regulations here were strong. So it's kind of ironic that you know they moan, they're moaning about EU, you know, the burdens of being a member of the EU, but then talk about how the UK went above and beyond the EU's base regulations. It doesn't make sense, does it? For all of the talk of removing hurdles to, grow, to growth and investment, there is a regulatory culture in this country that does not require membership of the EU to make itself felt. So essentially saying, you know, we don't have to be a member of the EU to kind of feel the burdensomeness of regulation. The repeal of hundreds mostly promulgated, um, so that word meaning uh, promote or make widely known, um, sorry, the, the particular, sorry, to all the talk about removing uh, hurdles to growth and investment, the regulatory culture in this country um, felt the repeal of the hundreds of rules, mostly for level playing field reasons rather than any intrinsic merit, is essentially not just to fulfil Brexit promises, so, but to help generate growth. But the thing is, right, you know, by deregulating, you're gonna, you might increase some growth, yes, but when the next financial crash hits, it's going to look far worse. Um, just as the economy faces being tipped into a recession. So is it a good idea to start deregulating financial services just as we're heading to a recession? So these people are going to gamble more money away and then once the crash hits, they're going to feel it and they're going to ask for a bailout. You know, is it a good idea to start deregulating? Now, surely now, as we know we're going to go into a recession at the end of the year, you strengthen regulations in order to make sure businesses cannot collapse as easily. In particular, the regulations holding back financial services, such as the controversial Solvency II rulebook, which is ironic given that the EU are actually looking at reforming Solvency II and may do so quicker than the UK, and other measures harmful to capital markets. It's not harmful to a capital market, it's regulating them. It's making sure they don't do anything stupid. The controversy over Northern Ireland protocol also needs to come to a head very soon, which it is. Um, that makes the preservation of the Union the priority yet. You didn't make it a priority in 2019 when you sacrificed Northern Ireland in order to get Brexit. After last week's drubbing for the Tories in the local elections, today needs to mark a new confident departure for the government. I mean, it's not going to happen. The Whoever's written this, if this is the te Telegraph's editorial board, you guys um, you guys are a joke. Let's be real here, because the, the idea that, you know, you talk about how uh, there were issues around the Northern Ireland Protocol, at least in 2019, wasn't true. You guys all backed it, and Boris Johnson lied about it consistently. And then suddenly, 
now you're like, oh, the union needs to be preserved. Why don't you keep that energy in 2019 instead of, you know, backing the Tories, which you guys did? Surely you wouldn't have backed him if you thought preserving the union was so important, because that's the thing Boris Johnson got rid of. Um, you know, you guys criticised Theresa May a lot, and ironically, she's the one that would have kept the union together. But um, look, anyways, I'm gonna leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Uh, it got a bit messy there in the middle. Apologies for that. And um, support the channel, Patreon, if you can. And hopefully, I'll see you in the next one.